so this is a block diagram of the 8711. And you can see it looks just like a vector network analyzer. It has uh, um, an, a, a S, an S uh, or channel one port, channel two port, let's say. So this one will be channel one. So S11 would be the reflection back in. And there's a coupler that captures that reflection back in. Um, and then you need to know how much power is coming out. So this is the signal source that comes out to channel one, and you capture a little bit of that and measure what's going out so you can level things. So you know how much is going back, how much is going out, you know how much is coming back, you can do the S11 measurement. And then there's a, a, a path over here that comes in and we can measure that one. And so uh, we can do S21, and then everything gets uh, mixed down to audio and then gets digitized and put into the microprocessor. And so it's, it's exactly like a, a nano VNA. If you've seen my video on the architecture of that, it's a nano, it's a, it's a VNA architecture. Um, so let's see here. So this is what I believe we'll, we'll, what we'll see inside of the unit. Uh, there will be Move it up a bit. Uh, there will be the two ports on the front. Uh, the number two port will come in. It goes through a limiter and then goes in to get measured. Um, the number one port will have a um, way to bring in the power. It'll go through this coupler. It's a dual port coupler, so it measures this way. Sorry, I got interrupted. Um, so there's a two port coupler, measure how much is coming in, how much is coming back. And so this is a 75 ohm unit. So these are 75 ohm connectors, 75 ohm cable, 75 ohm uh, coupler. So I'll need to change those out to 50 ohms. Now, there are several versions of this box. Uh, here's a fancy version that's got a whole bunch of couplers in it, but I don't have that one. And uh, this is the one I think I'm going to get because it has the uh, it has the uh, attenuator in it. Okay, so this is the one with the attenuator. So it has one path where the g signal generator goes through the um, attenuator, then comes through this port and then comes out, and then the reflection comes back. And then the amount of power is measured. Um, where's the amount of power is measured? I think it's from this one. I think this, this coupler here measures how much power is coming through. And then this is the uh, channel two, comes through here. Now, the, the uh, manual says this is all 50 ohms, that the input is all 50 ohms, except for this 75 ohm and this cable, but the limiter is 50 ohms and the detector is 50 ohms. So they do the 75 to 50 ohm conversion at the limiter, which is kind of weird. Um, the other side um, has a 75 ohm coupler and 75 ohm cables. Now this is supposed to be a 50 ohm coupler. So if I just swap these two, I'll put the 50 ohms where it's needed and the 75 ohms, I don't really care. It'll drop the, it'll, it really won't care on this side. Um, and so, yeah, I think I can just swap the two and then everything will be done, All right? So that'll be cool. Um, oh, here's another block diagram. Okay, yada, yada, yada. Here's another big block diagram. I made a big, a big print out of this one, what's going on. And you can see that um, there's a section up here that's the RF section. Uh, the channel A, B, and the return all come into this section, which is the down conversion into audio and uh, the synchronous detection for phase, um, and everything gets digitized. And anyway, that's what all this thing is, because then it says, insert your RF section here, depending on your model. And these are the different models over here. And this is the one without the 60 dB. This is a fancier one. And then this is the one that has the step attenuator. So this is the one that I should have. So that's why I thought the other one would match. Um, it's based off of a 68030 microprocessor with, co with a, a floating point coprocessor. And it has a bunch of other stuff in it too. Uh, CRT. All right. Uh, it's got a fancy reference and uh, PLL and all that other stuff. All right, so 
Let's go take a look at the unit. All right, uh, this videotaping is a little bit out of sequence. Uh, I've already taken some of it apart. Um, this is the, uh, the RF section, and this is the sampler, and this is, I don't know, the, the different things. I think this is the, uh, um, I, don't, I don't remember what they are. I, I know this is the RF section. This is the one I was interested in. These are the 275 ohm things here. Uh, this here is that there. This, this is all modular. Everything slides out from the front. You take the front panel off, and then everything slides out from this direction, and there's a motherboard in the back everything slides into. So the CRT and the power supply are all one unit, so that slides out as a unit, and then you can get access to the other ones, all right? So um, I'm going to go to uh, a, a, a separate clip that I've already recorded, and that is my conversion of these guys to 50 ohms, okay? So I'll put that in here now. All right, now that I have it working, the first thing I need to do is change those uh, 75 ohm connectors and put some 50 ohms on there, so let's do that. Here's the system ROM that's in it. It's a version C402, uh, January of 97. That's pretty good. And I don't have certain things installed. I don't know if those are software options. I know that some of these things are hardware options. I have the uh, step attenuator. And I have the 75 ohm option, which I didn't wish I didn't, but I do. All right. So the first thing you have to do is take the front panel off. So you take the mounting, uh, the ears in the front for grabbing this thing, take the ears off and then the front panel unbolts and it's held on with just uh, one ribbon cable connects it. So you disconnect that one ribbon cable and then you can look inside and everything is modular and, and basically slots. You, you slide these things into slots. So each thing is removable as a unit. So here's the bottom four slots. The one we're interested in is on the left there. That's the one with the two connectors and it has the uh, couplers and stuff inside. And that goes into the, uh, the first, first uh, mixer and stuff. And then it goes over to something else. Anyway, there's two other modules there. And then way over on the right is the um, floppy disk drive. And that's attached to the motherboard. So we'll, we'll get to that later. Okay, so I took out the RF uh, section and pulled off the connector. So there's a little uh, mounting bracket here that holds those two connectors. And so I need to change those two out. All right, I have two 50 ohm versions that were sent in by a viewer. Thanks, Bill. And here they're going to go to good use. They're the, uh, the right shape and size and everything to go in here. Let me show you the difference between a 75 ohm and a 50 ohm. The 75 ohm is on the left here and the 50 ohm is on the right. You can see the center pin is much, much smaller on the uh, 75 ohm and the, on the right, the, the center pin is much larger. So that's the way you tell. And uh, if you try to screw a 75 ohm into a 50 ohm, it won't make contact because the pin's gonna be too small. And if you try to put a 50 ohm male into a, a, a 75 ohm female, you'll stretch the uh, connector out and it'll ruin it. So yeah, don't do that. All right, uh, here it is back together. Um, and we need to slide this back into the unit. And this is what the unit look like, looks like from the top. You can see the connectors on the, on the right-hand side there, and you can see the 60, ohm, uh, 60 dB attenuator sits on top of this thing. Um, now, what I discovered was a bit disheartening that there is, this does not match any of the documentation that I had. Um, this looks like a much fancier unit. There is no separate um, couplers and they're all looks like they're under a big uh, metal uh, RF can down there. And it looks like they went ahead and, and designed their own and everything. So I think this was, on its way to being a real vector, vector network analyzer. My understanding, and somebody can correct me, is I believe that the 8711 was going to get turned into an 8712 vector network analyzer, but the 8712 was never released. I'm not sure why, but um, this particular unit, um, I believe was very, very close to being uh, a 8712 and just didn't quite make it out the door. I also decided just to leave the cabling in place, um, at least for now, just to try things out. And here's the back of the unit. There's a bunch of um, circuitry in the back that does some of the uh, digitization. 
those two connectors on the back are actually for uh, power meter connectors. So this thing can also act as a, a scalar network analyzer. You can plug two um, microwave power detectors in the back, and this thing will operate with those. All right, one of the other units that can slide out of this thing is the power supply slash CRT. So the CRT is in the front and the power supply is on the back. So it's one big modular unit. And that's that, that thing is hefty. All, uh, all stainless steel. Yeah, it's hefty. All right, so we've got it all back together here. The next thing is to uh, take a look at that motherboard. All right, since now we know about the RF section, we're going to have to worry about the firmware. Can we... Can we upgrade the firmware on this thing? All right. So uh, let me show you this while I have it in a wide angle here. So you pull on this and let me change the camera angle because it's not going to do it justice. All right. So th this is the floppy drive. You pull on this handle here and you pull out the main motherboard and it is large. It is large. Did I say it was large? Yeah, it's big. All right. And so, yeah, it's, it's really big. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's take it somewhere where we can take a look at it. All right. Can I get this in frame? Yeah. The, whoa, geez, this thing's big. <laughs> so, um, there's a DSP over here, uh, Texas Instrument TMS. 320 uh, C blah blah blah. Uh, there's another funny thing over here, a Sonic T development RS232. Oh, that's this plugin here. Everything I think is pretty well marked. Let's see. Um, wow. Yeah, everything's upside down. Let me uh, let me turn it around. All right, we'll go through it section by section here. This looks like a video RAM. And uh, here's battery backup. This says non-volatile RAM so that everything gets stored here. Uh, this is the microprocessor here. This is the um, floating point uh, coprocessor. So this is all processor stuff. Um, let's see here. Then we have, hmm. What does this say here? This looks like it might be, I'm not quite sure. I'm going to be guessing on that one. Uh, wow. Yeah. really can't figure this one out. There's tons of stuff going on. There's a bunch of, uh, uh, output ports. So this is, uh, this is GPIB here. Uh, and this, these are serial ports. There's some video in there. I don't know. A bunch of other stuff. Uh, it's quite complicated. Um, let's move over. All right, a uh, bunch of RAM here. Um, this is the boot ROM. So this, oops, sorry, I have to go down here. Uh, this is the boot ROM here. So uh, that's of great interest. Here's Flash. So the boot, uh, the boot boots up into Flash. So it copies everything into Flash, and then the program runs from Flash. Um, goodness, uh, I don't know, floppy port here, uh, there's some stuff over there, I don't know what's going on, tons and tons of stuff, this is a giant board, just giant, um, so, yeah, let's measure this thing. This board is 400 millimeters by... Uh, 270 millimeters. So yeah, it's, uh, that's a big board. 